Hi. Martha? Yeah. Where are you? Um, I'm not sure. I'm upstate, I think. Find out where you are and I will come get you. I can't wait that long. Welcome to What the Flick, everybody. Ben Mankiewicz, Christy Lemire, Alonzo Duralde. What's going on? How are you? It's a good day. Yeah, it's a good day. Mm -hmm. A couple of good movies. Uh, uh, Martha, Marcy, May, Marlene. Yes, you're getting that right. Yeah. In the uh, right order. And that's all. Um, that's going to be the extent of my contribution. Uh, I'm seeing it uh, tonight, uh, unfortunately, so, so I haven't glad. seen it. But uh, from what I understand, this is going to be a uh, excited review. You both like this movie. We are excited so. about stuff. Yeah, this is about a young woman in her 20s, played by Elizabeth Olsen, younger sister of famed multimedia mogul twins, Mary-Kate and Ashley, who flees a cult at the film's start and goes to live with her estranged older sister at their lake house in Connecticut. But the past and the present kind of converge and collide as her as her paranoia sneaks up on her. So take What's a look. Going on? She's here now. She seems okay. What'd she say? She had some boyfriend. They were living in the Catskills. Is this Martha? Martha. You look like a Marcy May. We've got a really nice place here. It's as much yours as it is mine. Where are we? Connecticut? Well, how far are we? From what? Yesterday. You mean from where I picked you up? About three hours. Why? Do you ever have that feeling where you can't tell if something's in memory or if it's something you dreamed? I don't blame you for not trusting people. If you're ever going to have a meaningful relationship, you need to let your guard down. We want to help you. Let us in. What happened to you? You're a teacher and a leader, Marcy. Now prove it. Shoot it. They're living animals. So shoot Max then. Go ahead. I know who I am. I am a teacher and a leader. You just... Never let me be that. I don't think she should stay with us anymore. We can't ignore the fact that her behavior is insane. I'm her only family. We have to leave. We all have to leave. What happened? I don't know. Well, she's she's just a picture. She lives lives on my wall. Just a picture. You're my favorite. I won't lose you. That's all. I already like it. I'm excited to see it tonight. Because she's an Olsen? Uh, I, well, I love I love the fact that she's an Olsen. That's, mm -hmm. uh, does she, does this mean maybe there's greater talent in the twins that is yeah. untapped? untapped? I think the twins are perfectly happy being fashionistas now, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I'm okay with that. All right. uh, and I think that Elizabeth is, she is so an actress to watch after this movie. I mean, mm -hmm. this is this is star is born territory. Mm -hmm. Like, this is one of those performers who are like, okay, her, is, she's now at the top of the list, I think, of roles for women in their 20s. I would imagine she's got her pick of whatever she wants to yeah, do. Yeah, because she's fascinating to watch. Like, her face is very placid mm -hmm. and very beautiful, and, and she has these deep-set eyes and these cheekbones like a young Faye Dunaway. Mm -hmm. And yet, there's such complexity and, like, subtlety to the way that she conveys her character's torment. Like, it's never showy. It's, it's all bubbling there. Yeah, and it's a fearless performance. Mm -hmm. She's called on to do some weird stuff mm -hmm. in this movie, and she, you know, plunges right into it. What's... I mean, this movie's so great in a lot of ways, but I think what's what's really cool about it is that it, um, it, while it certainly delves into the whole idea of the cult mindset and what becoming a cult member does to you and your personality and your sense of self, it's also this really great movie about post-traumatic stress disorder mm -hmm. because she gets out of the cult, but the whole time she's sort of racked with these memories and mm -hmm. you know not sure what's real and what's not and. And what's great about the movies, I've had arguments with people about, well, is this really happening or is, she, is it just her paranoia? And oh. the movie never tells us. Like, it, did the cult time actually happen? Like, is that the question? No, no, no. Are but but you? like, like when when she's out of the cult, mm -hmm. 
and she starts thinking that the cult is coming to get, coming her. To get her. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is she delusional, or are they coming to get her? And it, the it movie, doesn't matter either way. The movie, it doesn't matter, and the movie makes either plausible. Right. So it doesn't let you off the hook of like, oh, you know, there's there's no little like one shot here that says, oh, no, no, she's just making this up. Like, right. no, 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 you don't know. And so it really just kind of tightens the vice. It's mm-hmm. almost like... It's a very Polanski kind of movie. Um, it's like watching Rosemary's Baby, where it just she gets deeper and deeper, and you just get tenser and tenser. And there's no release at the end. There's no like, whew, everything's going to be okay. Right. It's, Even it's, down to the last shot. Yeah, the shot. last second, you're like, yeah, right. And and just, pe- pe- you know. People have been kind of angry about the last shot because it is really intentionally ambiguous. But yeah. I like that about no, it. No, that's the it's the perfect right. ending. That yeah. does not. This movie does not need a cherry on top. It it is. It's a, it's it's a, it's an ending that will have people talking and arguing, and that's what good movies should really right. do. I and think. it's it's tense. You mentioned Polanski. You mentioned Rosemary's Baby. It's tense in much subtler, more naturalistic ways than that. Well, right? sure, I'm, without I'm, without but, the devil. Yeah, but know. that's why it's so effective. <laughs> is that it's it's all like these long takes, mm-hmm. you know, and this, this ambient noise and very naturalistic lighting, and like it builds kind of a, a steady buzz that you don't even perceive actively as you're watching it. Right. Like you you yeah, realize, I'm really tense. And it's because he's laid it all out and submerged you in this world. And, and, and there's there's so much, and, and it's not, ex- you know, the, the story goes into a lot of interesting places in that, you know, yes, she's gotten out of the cult and you think, oh, yay, great. But then she goes back to her family and you realize that it's her family that kind of has led her to want to be in the cult in the first place, you know. And so clearly that's not like, she may be rescued in one sense, mm-hmm. but she's sort of, Gone from one bad situation to another. She's still one, never safe. Right. Yeah. Uh, you're pr- clearly, without saying his name, you're praising this guy, Sean Durkin. Sean Durkin. Sean yes, Durkin. Yes, writer director. Sean say. Durkin. This writer is, director. This is his first feature film. Yeah. His yeah. first. Yeah. I believe so. Yeah. Like yeah. No. I, shorts listed here. And I, I. Yeah. I saw this at Sundance this year. I was just like, holy crap, you know. Yeah. And and so I'm so glad that now this movie is getting into theaters mm-hmm. and and you know it's it's. Definitely going to be a player in, in the coming awards season, I think. Yes. Well, let me ask you about two, because there's a couple of Deadwood veterans in this. Oh, yes, John Hawks. John Hawks and Sarah Paulson. I, have a, I, have a, mm-hmm. I, I, I react very strongly to Sarah Paulson, frequently angrily, but she obviously makes this impression on me in so almost everything she's... She's in, but John Hawks is as good as there is, and he's great in this. God, film. he can he's, do everything. Oh, he's he's very creepily charismatic, but still creepy. Like <laughs> calmly, so he never raises his voice. Yeah, and yet he has an absolute hold over his followers, and a lot of really horrific stuff happens yeah. to them, but they're willing to go with it to follow him. I want to so. give a shout out here to Brady Corbett, who plays like the sort of the hot cult member who goes out to get the new attractive women and drags them oh, yes, into the yes, cult. Yes, yes. When we do a shout out, should we do something? Like not just say a shout out? Get some confetti or something. Right. But no, he's one of those actors, he was in Mysterious Skin, um, and uh, every time I see him I go, oh, who is that guy? He's really good. And then I get to the credits, oh, that yeah. was Brady Corbett. Like I don't recognize him from movie to movie, and there aren't a lot of actors who do that. A lot of them get so sort of invested in this image that as soon as they walk on the screen, like, oh, that's Brad Pitt, you know, right. whereas people like him or Jennifer Ailey or back when he was acting, uh, Justin Theroux, like, mm-hmm. I would like them in a movie, but I wouldn't know who they were until I saw them. And these people you're praising, Brady Corbett is uh, 23 and Elizabeth Olsen is 22. There you go. Yeah. And John Hawks is in his 50s, but is like just in the last couple of years having John this. Hawks is in his 50s? Yeah. yeah but he's, he's hot, 52. hot, hot. But he has like, this renaissance going on and, and we were no talking way. about Winter's Bone he's earlier. 47 tops. No, he, I mean, I know Look, you know. look it up. Look you it have up, the freaking iPad, iPad there. Look it up. Um, but he can just Does do everything. Does 52 count as in your 50s? Yes. yes. In his 50s. <laughs> <laughs> um, but between this and he was in Contagion this year, yeah. he is Vera Farmiga's father. Father in, in higher, higher ground. ground. Really good in that. All very different roles, and uh, he can just do everything. Lost. Was he in Lost? Of, well, I'm such a populist. Yeah. Was he in Lost? <laughs> yeah, I never, yeah, I've never up seen in the Lost. Last season of Lost. Yeah. Okay. Never seen Lost. Yeah. Anyway, he's it's great. Really great. great and everything. I'm excited yeah. for you to see it. It's all star on Death. So good. Okay, so uh, numbers. I guess they're going to be high. I'm going big. I'm going with a ten. Yeah. Woo! Uh, I'm going to say 8.6. We really have to work on the shout out. There's no question. <laughs> uh, so I'm anxious to see it tonight. 9.3 for uh, Martha, Mary, May. Marley. Oh, you had it before. I really what? hope. Martha, Marcy, May, Marlene. I really hope the title doesn't like dissuade people I, from going to see it because it's a really clunky yeah. title, but it makes that's chilling because, sense. That's just because I can't read my own. Just go to the theater and say MMMM. Martha, Marcy. Please see it. May, Marlene. Go see it. Bye.